Hair Collab for Ancelia Africana. Welcome, thank you so very, very much for clicking on this video. Today I am teaming up with Teresa's Corner, Stephen Van Campen Lewis, and TD More Than Just Orchids. And I can tell you that if you have never seen a small Ancelia Africana, then here we are. Welcome, you've come to the right place. This is mine, and she is very, very small in comparison to what else is going on in the world and how she should be. I believe that mine is still a seedling, maybe? I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see what this year's new growth spring, if I have a compacter version and not the standard ginormous size Ancelia Africana that is very, very common in the countries anywhere south of Kenya. Kenya being included, and in South Africa, more around Natal, Swaziland, uh, as far south as Durban. But it was originally discovered on the island of Bioko, which is about 100 kilometers south of Nigeria, around about there, West Africa. Still, very, very commonly found on the African continent as well. So what is it doing in Spain? Well, <clears throat> I am in Spain, southern Spain to be exact, and I am from Kenya. And even though I never had the privilege of seeing this orchid in the wild, Ancelia Africana, the name says it, I had to have it. It says Africana in it, and that made me go, I need this one in my life. It brings back memories of my life in Africa. Never mind its size. Back in the day, I thought I'll accommodate the size when it gets to that point. It's been in my collection now three years, so we haven't reached that point yet, but it had a tough time on arrival. It was just two pieces with two little sticks per piece, this being one piece and this being another piece. No roots at all, which was very, very disturbing and scary. However, it took a year to somewhat kick into action and realize that I meant it absolutely no harm and I want it to do well, and then it started to grow new growths for me in 2020. So these, with the leaves on, are all new growths. Not saying I am super proud of how beautifully grown this orchid is, but considering what I got on arrival, I am happy it's alive. That's all there is to it. It finally adapted into the self-watering with Lekka, which I prefer simply because I cannot provide it with the humidity it would prefer, which is around 70%. I don't have that in my climate. When it gets colder in winter, it doesn't like the cold temperatures being a hot to warm grower. My temperatures in winter in the dining room can get down to 14 degrees Celsius. That is not something that this orchid would like to have long term. Seeing as it's only a couple of months and it is on very rare occasions that I go down to those temperatures, I am managing to hold on to this orchid and make sure that it hopefully will thrive come this year. It still hasn't gotten into active growth. Our temperatures are not yet conducive to kickstart its inner mechanisms to say, I am at home and I'm gonna start growing. I still have temperatures in mid-April that are around the 22, 23 degree mark, which is much more pleasant than it was four weeks ago. But for this orchid, if we get to 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, that's when it's gonna trigger something and start to grow me some new growth. That is the plan anyway. And then we'll take it from there to see if I have a more compact variety of an Ancelia Africana, or if I have the normal standard size one, which can have canes up to a meter long. Yes, it can be a big one if I get it right, if I even have that variety. Speaking of varieties, obviously, clearly mine has not been in bloom. I can't tell you anything but from what I know about this orchid regarding the blooms. The fact that it is, in my books, like the Highlander, there can be only one. It is a monotypic genus of orchid with only one species in it. However, when they get around to observing and analyzing this Ancelia Africana because of the vast variety of blooms, I mean, the blooms don't all look the same, so I still don't know which one I've got because I could have just the yellow form with light yellow blotches as opposed to what I want and is the most desirable form, 
is the yellow with the burgundy and brown blotches, giving it its name of the leopard orchid. The variety of the flowers would actually say that it is possible that there is more within this one species of Ancelia africana that they as yet have to separate out and only time will tell how they will do that. But if you see, for example, an Ancelia africana with yellow blooms that have sort of a pale yellow marking, it would kind of bring to mind that it is the alba form of something, much like a Cyclopsis bloom that you get the alba as opposed to the different color contrasting with the darker brown and oranges. So that is what happens with the blooms here on the Ancelia africana. There's a lot of different varieties and I am certain I'm going to be seeing something really stunning today with the other videos of TD More Than Just Orchids and also Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. I do not know what phase Teresa Corner's Ancelia africana is at this point, but the links are in the description below to their videos and I would encourage you to go and have a look-see if my small little example here is not exactly inspiring you to get one. But we've got to start somewhere and it wasn't easy to find this one and that's probably why I got duped with some canes because one orchid was torn apart to make it last through more and more buyers. I don't know, but at least I have leaves and it is alive. So my preferred setup, as you can see, also with this one is Lekka and self-watering. And that is because of my low humidity in my climate. I would prefer to be able to give this exactly what it needs, but I can't. So I try to compensate with my setup with the Lekka and self-watering. Once this orchid gets growing and starts with new growth, it's time to fertilize and fertilize hard and a lot. It's almost like a catacetum. Once it gets growing, you need to be pumping that water in and fertilizer at a rate of knots to keep up. Clearly, I have not been able to do that as much because mine is a recovering pieces of remnants of a stick of an orchid. Now that we have some growth and finally I have some roots in the pot, which took a long time to develop, but now they're crawling out of the pot again, which is great. I'm going to be able to be more aggressive with my fertilizing regime when she gets growing. I do keep the microfiber wet at all times, even if I don't have the reservoir full, especially in the winter. For me, it's a little bit of a balancing act to make sure that she is happy in my low temperatures. Please excuse Siliano in the background, if you can hear him, he's having his mid-afternoon fit, as he normally does. I appreciate your patience with Siliano. <laughs> Where were we? Low temperatures, yes. <laughs> my winters can go down to 14 degrees Celsius where she lives in my dining room. It is rare and they can tolerate it, they can take it, but it's not something that she would prefer long term. So thankfully, I only get that every once in a while. Most steady temperatures in my winter is 17 to 19 degrees. And in the summer, well, my goodness, the heat is on and a lot of it. I'm like the Ancelia Africana. Give it to me hot, give it to me, well, more humid would be nice, but I don't get that here in Southern Spain. But this is perfect for her when the temperatures start to rise. She will be waking up and then hopefully we can see if she is a compacter grower or if she is a little bit more of a stunted grower. Either way, when I start fertilizing, it'll be at 300 parts per million. I am not upping the fertilizer concentration specifically for one orchid, but I put in a lot more often because she will be drinking up the reservoir pretty fast. So instead of just 300 once a week, she's probably getting 300 steady throughout the entire week. And that could be twice, three times when we really get going because that's how much she starts to drink up. You can see that the high fertilizer has not left any residue on the top of my leka, even as she is only growing these small first growths that I got. So this one is a hungry, hungry orchid. I do flush through every single time, though when the reservoir is empty. Twice with a mask, I use it as a measure and then I refill with 300 parts per million again. And in the winter, I'm a little bit more conservative. Obviously, no fertilizer, there is no need. She's not growing, 
but I am conservative with regards to the water in the reservoir. I make sure that the microfiber never goes dry, but it doesn't mean the reservoir has water in it. And if I just repeated myself, again, apologies, Siliano is really, really distracting me. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with this. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Right, so she lives on the top shelf of my dining room under blurple lights, directly under blurple lights in the winter. She is a super highlight orchid. And when she is outside, because the weather in the winter here in Southern Spain is agreeable and nice, and in certain pockets, it's toasty, I have her on the top shelf of the rack when I have it on the west side of the patio. So she is a full light orchid, full sun, heat, you name it. This one loves it. Now that we have sort of switched with the angle of the sun, my east side gets more sun during the morning and then into early afternoon. But the hours of the sun remain the same, six to seven hours with, of sunshine every single day. But she is on the top rack, again, in her perched corner there, but on the east side. So she gets sun from the moment the sun rises up until about three, four o'clock. And now as the sun goes higher and higher in the sky, it can be until five o'clock that she will have sun. But then we're talking July, August. But we're also then talking the hottest months of the year. And that kind of proves just how hot this orchid loves it and how much light she can tolerate. It's a bit windy, so I'm always trying to make sure that my pot doesn't blow over. Thank you very much for putting up with my circumstances here. <laughs> it's, not, it's not entirely ideal, but your patience is appreciated. Thank you. So we discussed fertilizer, we discussed light. One more thing that I just wanted to mention. In my case, I have not seen a single pest on this orchid. Clearly, one could say, well, there are no blooms, but sometimes pests will come even if there are no blooms. But thankfully, this one has no problems whatsoever. I am guessing that she is starting to pick up in her little maturity thing because of the aerial roots that she's forming, which normally would be much more extensive. And they form like a collecting basket for debris and leaves and all that kind of thing, which in their natural habitat is also their fertilizer source. So I'm seeing signs of progress on her and I'm so looking forward to new growth. I had one that's a bit wonky. I try to train them according to the light so that they stay in the pot. But you know, there's always one that kind of stands out and goes in a different way. And this is how much light she likes because this growth, the sun was coming from this angle and had, these had already matured. I had her facing this way. When this growth opened up, the sun was coming from this way and I thought it would be best for her to be with the, in the opposite direction of the sun to rectify and correct this cane to grow straight up. My white walls are so much more reflective as a light source, so. <laughs> Yeah, it went straight towards the wall, but you can tell just how much light these guys love. And that is pretty much what I would say it regarding how I care for my Ancelia Africana, clearly a little one, but we will watch and see what happens this growing season. And I hope I'm not expecting too much to then just be disappointed and have sort of the lead balloon effect after the season, <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, the other channels, Teresa's Corner, Stephen Van Kampen, Lewis, and TD More Than Just Orchids also have Ancelia Africana. I bet that they are five times the size of mine. So I look forward to seeing their videos and I hope that you'd enjoy seeing their videos as well because when this species is grown correctly, it is quite the sight. Thank you ever, ever so much for watching. Really appreciate your company for putting up with Siliano and my getting distracted. Thank you. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care. Bye.